hi there again everyone, this is again Alan and welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited because we are gonna be having again another watercolor review that you have been asking me to have ever since and that is no other than the review of the Paul Rubens watercolor. But before we start, I'd like to ask for your understanding because my voice is sounding weird today. I'm not feeling so well, that's why I'm having my tea beside me. I don't know, I feel so weird and uh, I think this is just maybe holiday separation anxiety. <laughs> anyway, we are gonna be pushing through with our review and without further ado, let's begin. I got my set in Amazon US for 38 US dollars through a friend. 38 US dollars is around 2,000 Philippine pesos and uh, lately I've been seeing the same set in Shopee Philippines for 2,800 Philippine pesos roughly and uh, they also have sets in tubes and in uh, 12 half pans. So let's go to the box. So the box is pink. It looks very unique because I believe this is my first pink box of watercolor and aside from pink I believe they also have sky blue and black boxes so in front you can find here the logo the Paul Rubens logo here some texts artist transparent watercolor fine artists watercolors It feels really tough and sturdy so let's take a look inside anyway uh, I've already opened this before but I have not used the, the paints yet so inside you can find this sheet information sheet that is in Chinese if you want to uh, understand what's written here you can download the translation the Google Translate app in a Play Store and you can just um, tap your camera there and it will automatically translate it to a language that you are gonna be choosing so this is a swatch sheet I believe this is a water color paper and here they provided the names of the colors in Chinese the pigment coat and this is the light fastness uh, rating the one with the number seven or eight or uh, six because I've already read this or scanned this through the Google Translate app so now I know and this is the transparency so behind the sheet is again some text information and also the company name and this um, code I think you can scan this maybe for authentication if this is a uh, authentic brand or authentic unit another sheet that you can find inside is their brochure or catalog which shows all their colors and I'm not sure what is this set for and this set for I did not scan about this but I believe this is the full set of colors so if we are gonna base the number of colors found here they have 100 colors all in all so now let's set this aside and this is now our palette and this looks so special because it is wrapped with a special cloth also in pink that has the logo also and it feels like the cloth you use for wiping your your glasses and I don't want to be using this to clean my brushes or my my uh, palette you just want to keep it clean because it looks very pretty so now this is the palette it's also in pink it looks and feels pretty standard also has ring under it also comes with the logo so What's good about it is that the extra palette on the bottom side does not fall down. It's on same level so you can effectively use this palette. 
So now let's check an individual half band. So here is the again the name of the brand, the color code, and the English name. And on one side, because I've already checked the translation on the Google Translate app, the first line is the color name, the second line is the pigment code. So we can see here PB29. The next code is the light fastness rating, so you can find the number 8 there that indicates the highest and um, 7 is next, then 6 and so on. And the bottom is the transparency. I am showing you right now a screenshot from the Google Translate app translation. So now let's start unwrapping our pants. For the first pan, we will be having it in actual speed and for the rest, we will be uh, speeding it up to save time. Okay. So this is going to be quite challenging because I don't have long nails. <laughs> but this is so relaxing and satisfying. So there you go. So I'm going to be saving the cover for reference. Let's have again the second pan in actual speed because it's so satisfying. <laughs> the paints are poured so perfectly as you can see and you can see that here and the uh, paints did not stick into the paper which is a cool thing. Okay, let's speed this up. So now we are done peeling off the wrappers of our half pants. And it looks so satisfyingly beautiful. And for our swatches, of course, we are using 185 arches cotton paper. And this is cold pressed. And to be fair with the other brands that we have reviewed, I am not going to be re-wetting the half pants prior to swatching. So now we are ready to start. So the first color is permanent lemon yellow and it re-wets very easily and it's also very intense. But it's a little uh, opaque. Next color is cadmium yellow medium. And it also rewets so easily. And as expected, this is cadmium color. This is also a little opaque. Next color is Indian yellow. This is transparent, warm yellow. So now let's go to cadmium red light. opaque color. Now let's go to Scarlet. Now this is transparent. Next we have Mother Red which is also very intense but still transparent. So far the first line of colors are all so intense and pigmented now let's go to the next line let's start with violet and it's also very intense next we have permanent violet so this is PB23 so this is dioxazine purple next we have cobalt blue and this is a real cobalt blue pigment. This is PB28. This is uh, semi-opaque because this is cobalt blue. And it's very intense. Now let's go to France Ultramarine. So I followed what they've written in their sheets. 
Next, we have Sky Blue, which is a PB36, which means it's a real cerulean pigment. In Daniel Smith, I believe this is cerulean blue chromium. Next, we have Sea Blue, which uses PB15 is to 3, so that means this is a thalo blue green shade. So now we are done with the first half and again the colors are so impressively intense and on the second line they are all transparent. Even the cobalt look blue which was opaque earlier becomes more on the transparent side this time. Now let's have Prussian blue. I'm not a fan of Prussian blue because it's a fugitive color although some brands even Daniel Smith rate it as very light fast uh, color but I'm glad that here in Paul Rubin's catalog they uh, considered it a 6 out of 8 so they're a bit honest on that but based on hand paint some pigments or I mean maybe some sources of Prussian blue or PB27 are light fast but mostly, I think, are not light fast. Because in some tests, the pigment faded, and in some did not, so, so that makes the pigment, you know, unstable, in my understanding. Anyway, let's go to Paints Gray. This is composed of three pigments, and it looks very uh, bluish very near to an indigo and you can use this for shadows next is yellow green next we have tree green which is composed of four pigments next is hooker's green brilliant A very useful green. Next we have Emerald Green Deep which uses PG7 or Halo Green. So on the third line again they're all very intense and mostly transparent except I think for the tree green sorry for the yellow green. Now let's go to the last line the earth tones. So this is yellow ochre which uses PY42 and yellow ochres are expected to be opaque and it is. Next we have Pozuoli red ochre. Which uses PR101. So this is very intense color also for a brown because it uses PR101 but I think this is semi-opaque. Next we have Umber which is composed of two pigments. I think this looks like a burnt sienna but they have burnt sienna here. This is quite um, thin or light as compared to the others. Next we have the burned sienna. It's not burnt sienna, it's burned sienna as written in their uh, brochure or catalog. Now they are using PBR7, the usual brown pigment. Next, we have Burnt Brown. This looks like a raw umber to me. Or a burnt umber. And lastly, Cool Black. Which uses PBK7.
So now we are done with our swatch sheet. And let me just zoom it in for your closer look. So now let's do our sample painting. I'm gonna be speeding this up to at least 25 times to save time. At some points I'm gonna be pausing and I'm gonna be uh, sharing some tips regarding the, the technique. And if you have further questions, please don't hesitate to just comment it down and I'll be answering as soon as I can. So, I think we're ready to start. So now I'm warming the sky by combining Indian yellow and scarlet. Adding it to our sky, our blue sky. So, because I'm, I'm not a fan of you know, just plainly blue sky. As long as I can, I add blush, blushing colors or golden colors. So I want warm skies. That's personal. So now we are going to be uh, reflecting the sky colors into our uh, water area. So we're using the same color but this time we are going to make it uh, a little bit more subtle. More subtle and uh, we are going to leave lines, random lines to show the light reflection and to uh, indicate that there is movement in our water. Now let's proceed to the mountains. This is just a combination of uh, burned uh, sienna and uh, green. The hooker's green brilliant. and sample painting I can now say that the Paul Rubens watercolors is really not a bad watercolor band at all it the colors are very vibrant and very intense the color selection is nice for me at least because these colors are perfect for landscape paintings which I always do and they also have a, a cool and a warm version of each of the primary colors which is very uh, basic they also provide a general set of earth colors if I need to give suggestion for the selection of colors, that would be first is to add a uh, rose color for the cool red. The matter red is already a cool red, but for those who are doing uh, botanical paintings, floral paintings, the cool red or the pink or an opera maybe 
will be a very good addition to this set and also I'd like to replace the Prussian blue with a, a turquoise or a teal I uh, really personally love the sky blue here the PB36 I believe this is the darkest in uh, the darkest PB36 that I have seen and also the French ultramarine is very uh, fine contrary to the usual appearance of PB29 which is granulating I prefer a granulating uh, color or uh, ultramarine but this is gonna be beneficial for those who do not want a granulating ultramarine and when I was using it there was also a feeling that I was using some sort of an ink medium I'm not sure but yeah it has that feeling which is not a bad thing but yeah it's it's different and um, maybe that is brought by the very fine pigments I think because the, f the feel or the texture of the paint when you lay them is very thin so that's my observation I'm not saying that that is a good thing I'm not saying that that is a bad thing that's just my observation because in the end um, it will fall under your preference Paul Rubens watercolors are artist grade watercolors I see online that it has a uh, student grade counterpart but I need to research first if it is true that the uh, pretty excellent watercolor is their student grade counterpart because I have been seeing comments and um, notes in some YouTube artists that uh, Paul Rubens and Pretty Excellent are made by one company so uh, right now I'm looking for Pretty Excellent uh, stocks here in the Philippines if you have some please comment it below and I might get a set also to compare with uh, the Paul Rubens watercolors and now I think it's time for some quick comparisons let's compare it with some of my artist grade watercolor paints and for that let's begin with with of course my favorite Daniel Smith so intensity wise you can see that both are intense but I need to give the point to the Daniel Smith watercolors because the pigments have more character which is uh, my personal preference whereas in Paul Rubens the colors are more the textures are more uniform next is the Rembrandt luxury watercolors this is from Royal Talents this is their artist grade and both are very intense but this time I think I need to give the point to the Rembrandt because just like Daniel Smith the colors have more character into them I think Rembrandt is a little bit more intense than the Paul Rubens just like Daniel Smith next we have a Gallio honey watercolors this is handmade watercolor paints that I consider artist grade because that's how I uh, feel about them when I use them and um, these Egalo honey watercolors are very very fine watercolor paints and uh, I, I, I feel really good whenever I use them and I think um, they're on par when it comes to uh, appearance and intensity but I think I'm gonna give the point this time to Egalo because the colors are also much more character filled just like in Daniel Smith because they're not the same each color is not the same each color does not give you the same feeling or uh, yeah whenever you use them next is the Mijello Mission Gold class I think these two are very much comparable both have you know uh, inky feel when I use them and yes they are both intense and when you compare the colors they are very much comparable except for the ultramarine where uh, Bijelos is more granulating but the others are very much more comparable so this time I'm gonna say they're Thai next we have White Knights by St. Petersburg this is the artist grade watercolor paints from Russia both have intense colors but when you look closely you can see that white knights have more character and more intensity heavier intensity which i prefer both their ultramarines are very fine not so granulating 
the cerulean blue are different the cerulean blue from white knights is very light while the cerulean blue in uh, paul rubens is very deep but they are different pigments so that's understandable for the the browns are pretty comparable the yellows and the reds as well but overall when you look at the white knight set they are more intense so i need to give the point to the white knights and we have one final comparison. This is a bonus because this is not an artist grade. This is a student grade. And that is the Sonnet watercolors. As you can see, the Sonnet watercolors are more intense, more vibrant. But both of them feel like they're inky in uh, texture. And uh, for that, I think I'm going to give an equal point to these two. So now, if you're gonna ask me would I recommend the Paul Rubens watercolors, my answer would be it depends on your preference. If you're the type who doesn't want inky feel in your watercolors, I would suggest you to get something else. If you're the type who prefers granulating colors in your set, I would suggest you to get Daniel Smith and select your own tubes. But if this appearance is okay with you and the inky texture doesn't bother you, and if granulation is not your thing, then this is really one great brand for you. Also, one consideration is its availability. If you are from US and if you are in the Philippines, I'm sure you can have this. You can have this from Amazon US or in Shopee Philippines because there are already sellers in these locations. Also, you can find it in Wish but I am not sure if... It is very reliable because I have not tried it yet. If you have tried it, you can also comment it below and put a link. So that would be all for today. If you have questions, suggestions, comments, reactions, you can all put it on the comment box. And if you have experiences using Paul Rubens, you can also share it with us so that other artists will also learn. Okay, thank you for watching. Again, if you're not subscribed yet, please do subscribe to show support to my channel. And also, don't forget to like and share this video. Again, thank you very much for watching and see you again next week.